beautiful Morgan Hill, California day, looking at a very nice uh, hand-built, one-of-a-kind, uh, built by one of the masters of the automotive industry on the aftermarket side. He isn't really in the aftermarket, but he hand-builds a lot of components for high-end street rods and uh, different kind of shops. So there's not many of these metal masters left, but this is his hand-built piece and creation. It's one-of-a-kind. It's all aluminum body, tube chassis built from the pavement up. We actually have an article at Spud's Garage that was produced for a magazine for it that kind of goes over the car, but we're fortunate enough to have Jack here to kind of walk around with us and go over it and, and we'll ask some questions and talk about the car. Weighs in at about 2,000 pounds, just under 2,000 pounds, has a 302 GT40 Tremec 5 speed and the rear end in it is? It's an 8 inch, uh, eight inch Ford. Ford rear end, yeah. Yep. Uh, so, limited slip by the traction. Okay, so I'm going to ask him some questions as I go around. I have that in my head, but I want him uh, to, uh, to help us out here and get this car just right because it's really special. I call it raw and beautiful is what I call it. You wouldn't want to change a thing, just a little bit of scotch, scotch bright. And, um, we're going to come up to the front here. Now this nose here, Jack, um, can you tell me this is, you see a lot of these on track tees and stuff and you can buy those parts from Speedway that look like that, but this is hand built by you though. Yeah, yeah, it's a typical grill that we built for, you know, back in the early days with the midgets and sprint cars and stuff like that and, and some hot rods, track type cars. Um, yeah, it's just a common piece. So you build it to the dimensions of your nose, so aesthetics, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of mock-up stages of it goes on when you go True. build a car like this. Yeah. I, I'm sure you fit it and then decide if it... Uh, yeah, the opening is important, you know, it kind of has to go with the flow of the car. The and, aesthetics, uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of give it that race car look a little bit. Well, while we're up here at the front end, it has a, uh, uh, the front end in it is a torsion bar, parallel torsion bar front suspension, correct? Yes, that's right. Y yeah, and these are, uh, you'll see right up here looking through the video, we'll take it through here, but we'll have pictures at Spud's Garage. It has their center mounted QA1 Pro shocks, so they're adjustable. You can adjust the stiffness of the ride or the ride height with a torsion bar suspension, unlike any other suspension. Correct. Yeah. He likes to use torsion bar suspension in his own cars, and that's evident on one of the other cars we have listed here. Now, these control arms are all, uh, these are uh, Atterbury components? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Atterbury made the, made the, uh, uh, the A arms and. Uh, and the spindle housings and everything. So these are all handmade stuff. This whole car is handmade, basically. Correct, yeah. And that's uh, uh, the Atterbury brakes also and the rotors. Now, you're not able to see this, but he hand forms and hand rolls all these components and then brings pieces together. And what's beautiful is that you really can't even tell where they were brought together. And that's just the work of a craftsman right there. The fenders are kind of neat. They're really tight. I mean, I don't even know what the tolerances you have. Obviously, they move with the tires. Yeah, so there's no issue with uh, them rubbing at all. Because, yeah. uh, you know, you can get down nice and tight and give it that good look. And, uh, of course, the back is obviously different because the fenders are built into the body, so that's why they got more clearance back there. Um, and all these fenders are really stiff, I noticed when I was feeling the edges. They're all rolled edges, and, I mean, these fenders are just... Uh, Cool. Wait till you see it. Uh, you probably already saw the video where we had him turning it around and backing it up uh, before we did the video. And you can see it's just uh, the arrow on this car is beautiful. To get the cement, you know, the uh, aesthetics right on this car is just unbelievable. You'll see the, you gave yourself a little clearance here in the hood. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's acceptable. Yep, yep. And the way he float, you float is, uh, this cowl looks like it's, uh, the, everything on it looks like it's one piece, but uh, we'll get to the back here and I'll tell you the whole tail piece is removable. We'll talk about that some more. Um, it's got some louvers in the side here to let the hood breathe a little bit. Correct. Now one of this thing about the car is the full underbelly, the whole chassis is covered except for some openings for air. Correct? Right, yeah, you need to have the openings underneath to let the air out, engine transmission area. It just gets too hot for a car like this. And uh, the side bench that I put in here, that was actually an after, probably a couple of years after I built this car, I did that, and it brings a lot of cool air into the cockpit area. Yeah, you'll see it's got some vents here. And when we get to the interior in just a minute here, I'm going to have him open it up. But I'm going to give you a little peek under the belly here. This might be a little bit of a long video, but it's informative and fun. Um, but it's much like a, you know, a early race car of the days where the belly, they created arrow on the underside also. Um, the same kind of theme went into another car that I've got a Jax. Uh, this windshield is a custom one-piece windshield uh, that's curved. He has an extra, is that correct, that goes with the car? Do you have a spare? Yeah. It wasn't cheap. I love how the dash rolls up into it and it fits just really tight along here. Um, 
The doors, I mean, the shape of these doors, I mean, you obviously had to bring the tail together and the nose together before you could ever make the doors, but uh, yeah. why don't you open it up and let us take, yeah. a, take a peek inside. Yeah, we just uh, basically mock everything up to start with and then uh, finish it off. Yeah, it's an all aluminum body car. Everything in it is aluminum. The the seats are hand built by you, correct? Correct. Oh yeah. And that's a uh, who did the interior on it? Uh, uh, Sid Chavers yeah, did the Sid interior. Did yeah, the, the interior. Yeah, I'm happy with that. The dash is kind of neat. It's got a uh, uh, aircraft style dash. When you sit behind the wheel of this, you almost feel like you're in an airplane. It's got a, a cockpit type feel to it. Uh, that looks like a true. Is that a Schroeder steering wheel in it? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Car has 371 miles since it was completed. It has German square weave carpet. Now this seat, this seat actually lifts up, so you have a storage compartment in, mm -hmm. in the back of it. Yeah. Is that something that? And a battery down in the, behind it, and uh, the storage underneath the seats, and then into the tail section. There's uh, you can put a small suitcase or a duffel bag or something like that in there. Right. Uh, you know, which makes it handy for a car like this. If you want to take a, a long run or a short run, or it doesn't matter. Roll bar here. Yeah. Um, Chromoly. Chromoly. Yeah. Plated. You yeah. notice the 25 uh, Special, which its title is the 1925 Ford. Yeah. The whole car is a one off design. Let me get up here. I know, like I said, I know we're spending some time, but it's worth every second of it. Aluminum firewall. You can see we talked about the vents on the side over here. See the vent where it comes in the side, and it's also got an air vent down on the floor there, so it could bring some air in for the driver and passenger. Also, we're going to talk about the back end, but before he shuts the door, this sill plate comes out of here, and uh, this whole back end section, fenders and all, which is about six feet long, actually was removed in one piece. Um, you can shut that door if you want there. Okay. These are true knockoff wheels, um, knockoff design. They're pinned, true knockoffs, right and left, so on and so forth. You can see where he's got the wires in them. Got BF Goodrich uh, Euro TAs on it, but on the back end here is just amazing. Uh, I, you know, how many mock-ups did you go through before you had to shape the way you? I, I probably mocked it up probably half a dozen times until I finally got the shape that I wanted that gave it a good flow. Yeah, you know, aesthetically. I, yeah, correct. And you know, it's uh, I've done you know a few midget bodies and sprint car bodies and stuff, and I kind of wanted to bring in that kind of a style without the crown on the top. And uh, and I built numerous bodies for other people, and I just I decided to just do something for myself, and uh, sort of take little bits and pieces of things I've done for other people in the past, and just sort of marry incorporate into Jack Hageman Jr.'s yeah, own much. car. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Right. By the way, Jack was inducted into the Hall of Fame at the Grand National Roadster Show in 1991. He's one of the first 100 members. So really knows his craft. He picked it up from his dad, who was also equally. Uh, astute when it comes to metal working. Right. Um, I notice you can see how the fenders, they actually cover the tires, but then it kind of goes down in here. And these are uh, 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 lights that you put in it. Yeah, LED. Yeah. LEDs. High tech lights. And there's a third light underneath. There's a third brake light in the fuel back here where the fuel yeah. fill is. And you notice he's got the arrow flowing over the fuel fill so it doesn't cause any issues. Uh, Airflow wise, I'm going to stand back and let you take a look at it. A little bit warm here, it's about high noon. But what I want to do is we've got it parked on a hill enough here so I can show you the, uh, the underbelly of the car is just incredible. You can't really see the suspension or anything, it's a full tube chassis that he built, at, like I said, from the pavement up. And uh, torsion bar, crossbar in the rear, QA1 shocks, four to eight inch rear differential. You can see the Nerf bar on the back here. Some call it a push car back in the race car days. Yeah, you gotta protect that tail. Yeah, well, well you wouldn't wanna try and repair that, that's for sure. They'd have to hire you. <laughs> so uh, anyway, walk around here, kinda give you a good look. I don't know what else I need to cover on the back side here. I just, Jack and I wanted to walk around this and really do it right. Cool. Huh? I'm gonna close that door there. Okay, yeah. Now you're going to actually open it up for us here. He didn't shut it all the way when he got out. He's very particular about his car, and I get it. I mean, there's a lot of time and hours. You just kind of did this filling in between jobs. How many years did it take you to build it? About five and a half months about, to build it. Yeah. So, I mean, when you get on something, you get it done. Yeah, you know, my, um, my dad had an old saying, when you know what you're doing, it doesn't take very long to do it. 
That's true. I mean, not to toot that's my true. horn, but you know, it just uh, that's just the way it is. And I've seen it that other people do the same thing too. And then some people struggle, and uh, but they finally get it. But it's been fun. Yep, yep. Yeah. Let me uh, get in on this side. Okay. Yeah, Schroeder uh, steering wheel. It looks. You did you build hand build that steering column in it too? Um, I don't remember taking it. I don't think so. I just thought of something. Now you can see all the brake uh, brake and clutch master cylinders there. That's it's a got good. a hydraulic clutch tilt. in it. Yeah, the tilt and brake setup, master cylinders and stuff. Pedals and all. Yeah, race car mm -hmm. style. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kind of just, we're getting around to the end of the video, and make sure you hang on because we're going to cover the engine compartment for here for you. I would tell you, I wouldn't, uh, you know, you, you don't even want to use the, the word that this car is not finished because it's intentionally left the way it is, so you can actually see the craftsmanship that goes into the metalwork. People come up to something like this and they just can study it for hours and, and uh, say, man, how did that all come together? Uh, again, the vents on this side. Fully independent suspension up front here. I think we just about got it, don't you, Jack? Yeah, and uh, maybe bring attention to the headlights. I made those to kind of match the tail. Right. Yeah, oh, that's right. These headlights are, do look yeah, like they're the shape of the yeah, tail. So these headlight tail. buckets are... Yeah, low tail effect. Yeah. But it's a lot. It's like driving a slot car. I heard you, know, I heard you say when we... Yeah, it's quick. It's uh, zero, 0 to 60 in a little less than 4 seconds. So it's, it's a handful. You know, anyway, you know, the thing I would tell you with a car like this is this is a piece of history. Um, all you have to do is to Google search to Jack Hageman Jr. and you'd find out a lot more about Jack. This is a hand-built car, his personal car, one of one. Make sure you go to spudsgarage.com. You can look at the article. We've got a magazine over here. We've, we've made full scans of it. Um, and uh, it's just been a special up here documenting and photographing it for you. Give us a call at Spud's Garage. We're absolutely never any pressure. Uh, be glad to answer any of your questions. Give us a call. Hang on to the end of the video and have a great right, day. Let's take a look underneath the hood. It's like the rest of the car. Everything on this car is just the fit. We'll have the hood down. You've already seen the hood down, but the fit is tight and right. Um, a lot of the things, this is a uh, 302 Ford, a GT40 crate engine, correct? Correct, yep. Aluminum head, roller cam. Aluminum head, roller cam. It's got an Edelbrock Performer RPM intake manifold. And it has a uh, Edelbrock carburetor or AFB. These headers here, Jack, you made, uh, you handmade these and then yeah, had them thermochromed. They're, they're all custom made for the car. Okay. Um, you can see the front suspension. Everything's raw and just beautiful in here. Um, the tube chassis. The car was built around the tube chassis that's also handmade. Um, polished aluminum valve covers as a serpentine belt drive system with a billet pulley or idler on it. Has an aluminum radiator. Is that something you had to have custom made the radiator on it, Jack? Or? Um, yeah, it's a custom radiator that uh, actually had to modify the uh, the tanks on it to make it work. Right, but it, right. But uh, it cools it down good. It thing runs about 170. And the transmission is a. It's a Tremec five speed. Tremec five speed. Yep. It's got the hydraulic clutch. In it, throughout Brian set up. It's got an MSD uh, distributor in it, Pro Series, uh, Pro Billet distributor. Yeah. So it's pretty much just tight and right in here. It's really tight, and you would look at the weight ratio on this car to horsepower 320, uh, 320 horsepower roughly, and 1,940 pounds. 1,940 pounds? Yeah, weighs about it's, 150 more in the back than it does the front. Yeah, a lot of fun to uh, drive, I bet. Oh, yeah, it's like a slot car. <laughs> I like this. Uh, this obviously is hand built by you. The air filter housing here. Yeah, the car, being the car is low in the front, like I like I designed it. I you know I had to obviously build a uh, a special air cleaner for it, and it works very well. Get plenty of air going through the thing. It doesn't hurt the performance at all. Yeah, and it's got a little K and N filter on the backside yeah, here. Yeah. So it's got a cleanable filter. Mm -hmm. And so these pipes were, like we said, handmade. And they're custom side pipes all the way to the side. We have a friend that came up and visited yeah. with us. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're going to shut the hood here, and we should be getting close to the end of the video. We appreciate you coming. appreciate Jack showing his car and giving the opportunity. Piece of history. Right, let's take Thanks. a look here. Uh, as you'll see, behind the seat, the, both these seats come forward. They have a release over there. Um, there is a little storage compartment or trunk here, and as you'll see, this whole entire body is all aluminum. Um, inner panels, the seats themselves. Anyway, hang on to the end of the video where we'll definitely have more. You could possibly be at the end of the video with this one.